All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick on the Powers. I've got a couple interesting stories for you guys today. The first story is going to be about Rambo. No, not the actual Rambo, but the synthol version of Rambo that has been going viral over the past week. So it seems like almost every single year we have a new viral synthol character um, that gains a lot of attention each year and typically remains a topic of conversation for a few weeks. Last year we had Kirill Tereshin. The young Russian kid that you guys might be aware of for faking that his arms exploded. He dyes his hair. He's been on several Russian news media outlets. And he was basically the synthol story of 2018. In fact, I did a video on Kirill back in 2018 that got like 27 million views. Now, it appears that 2019 is no exception to this synthol phenomena with this new breakout synthol star, Synthol John Rambo. Now, as of right now, Synthol Rambo remains unidentified. We don't know his name right now. We don't know where he's from right now. But a lot of people are assuming he's from Brazil because Brazil seems to be the hotbed um, for this kind of Synthol abuse where they really take it to the extreme. Now, the reason why I think it's important to show these examples of Synthol abuse is to remind people as a cautionary tale, this is why you don't want to inject your arms with any type of exogenous oil just to make the appearance of the arms look bigger. Now, clearly what we see with Synthol Rambo here is a lot of inflammation and pus and not really a lot of muscle. It doesn't look like muscle at all. It doesn't really have the effect that he thinks it's having because you got to remember when these guys do this, they keep doing it because they think it looks good. They develop this mental delusion that what they're doing looks fantastic. So this guy in his head, you know, he thinks he looks great while he's doing this. When clearly anybody looking at this guy, you know, no one thinks that looks good. But at the same time, I don't think we should make fun of people like this because I think this is a mental illness. This is a mental problem that leads to, you know, the end result that we see here with John Rambo. But I think people need to look at this and realize this is why you don't want to be injecting synthol into your arms because this is the road that you can go down because you're going to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep thinking it looks good until it ends up looking something like this um, and you're really past the point of no return. So it is kind of interesting that every single year there's a new guy like this that seems to one-up the synthol guy from the previous year. So I'm kind of nervous to see you know, what happens in 2020 and what kind of synthol freaks we're going to be seeing um, trying to one-up synthol John Rambo here. Now, the next story that I have for you guys today is a pose down between Brian Shaw and Eddie Hall. Obviously, both of these guys are two very accomplished strongman competitors. They both won the world's strongest man. Um, I just wanted to say I'm very impressed with Brian Shaw here at six foot eight and 440 pounds. I mean, everyone already knew that Brian Shaw is a freak of nature, but I was really impressed here um, when he's hitting these bodybuilding poses. Just how much muscle mass and separation is actually clearly visible there. Um, obviously, with a strongman competitor, they're not going to be crazy lean or really lean at all um, because their goal is to be as strong as possible. They have no intention of actually looking like a bodybuilder. They want functional strength and functional power. So their diet and training is in no way geared towards looking like a bodybuilder. But Brian Shaw really impressed me here. You know, just looking at some of the back shots, um, he actually, he resembles a bodybuilder in the shape and structure of his back. And I think he looked really, really impressive here. Plus, I just always think it's really cool to see guys crossing over and doing something that's a part of a different sport. Um, like when powerlifters cross over to bodybuilding, bodybuilders cross over to powerlifting, bodybuilders cross over to strongman, et cetera, et cetera, to see a world's strongest man winner posing like a bodybuilder. Um, it's just cool to kind of, you know, question those what ifs. What if they competed in bodybuilding? Or could Brian Shaw have been a bodybuilder? As a matter of fact, that's an interesting discussion. And let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. Do you think Brian Shaw or Eddie Hall could have been bodybuilders? Now, the next story that I have for you guys today is going to be about Rolly Winkler. So as you guys know, one of the biggest topics of conversation coming out of the Arnold Classic Ohio was Rolly Winkler's ab and specifically what was going on with his ab. So right now, it's pretty much 100% confirmed that the only thing that was happening with his ab was just simply an abdominal cramp, a really, really bad abdominal cramp. And after all that discussion was generated by Rolly Winkler, um, we saw a couple other guys come out and post videos of their own abdominal cramps, specifically Jason Poston, who is also an IFBB pro, posted a video of his really extreme abdominal cramp, pretty much in the same location as Rolly's, just one selected segment of his ab um, that seems to stick out when it cramps. And it looks extremely, excruciatingly painful. And again, pretty much looks exactly like Rolly Winkler's looked. 
And Jason says that this is something that he chronically suffers from. So this is something that is kind of a reoccurring thing. So although we've never seen this before with Rolly Winkler, or at least I've never seen it before with Rolly Winkler, it appears to be um, something that can be a chronic condition or a chronic occurrence. Now, after we saw Rolly Winkler's cramp, we also saw a cramp from a guy named Joe Linder, who goes by Joe Stetics on Instagram. Um, his video got almost 700,000 views where he posted his abdominal cramp. Um, and with his case, instead of just one side and one segment cramping, um, he had both sides cramping in the middle. It just looks, it just looks excruciatingly painful in all of these circumstances. And I'm sure for that to happen to Roly on stage at a bodybuilding contest was just absolutely miserable. So I really feel for him. Uh, I'm sure that really, really sucked to have that happen. You know, not only the fact that it happened, but the fact that it happened on stage, it just sucks. So I really hope Roly is able to redeem himself at the Arnold Classic Australia and probably get a top three placing there. And speaking of the Arnold Classic Australia, I did my prediction video yesterday for that. And I wanted to also give you guys an update on that. So in that video, I wasn't sure if there was going to be a live stream or not. I did find where they are going to be live streaming it. So that live stream will be linked in the description of this video. Um, so I wanted to make sure you guys knew where to get to that live stream. So there will be a live stream and it will be linked in the description of this video. Um, and again, just keep in mind, there's a massive time difference between Australia and the US. So when you're looking at those times, 7 p.m. on Saturday in Australia, that's going to be very early in the morning here in the U.S. But that will be happening this weekend. So next up, I wanted to talk about this video of this girl doing this lopsided squat. So in this squat video, um, she has two plates on one side and just one plate on the other side. But she's standing closer and she's positioned herself on the bar on the side with the more weight on it to balance out the weight. So first and foremost, this is pretty stupid and dangerous because you're not going to know if it's actually properly balanced until it's too late and you've already unracked the weight. So at that point, the way that you're going to find out that it's not balanced is probably getting injured. But people were sending this to me asking, well, why would she do this? Is she trying to train one leg heavier than the other? What is the goal of doing this? Well, I think the main goal of doing this is to get views on Instagram. Um, but as long as you're centered and the bar is balanced and the weight is equally distributed, you know, based on how you're holding the bar and you're going straight up and down and the bar remains level, then the movement becomes bilateral. You're working both sides of your body evenly because the weight is distributed evenly the way that you're holding the weight. It's the same as like a leg press machine. You could put four plates on one side of the leg press and one plate on the other side of the leg press and it's still going to work. That load is still going to work your legs both evenly because that's a bilateral uh, machine. Now, an example of a unilateral machine, a machine where you would work one body part at a time, would be like a hammer strength chest press machine where you can press one side of the machine individually. So you could only, you know, if you wanted to only push one arm, you could. If you wanted to push both arms, you could as well. On a machine like that, if you loaded four plates on one side and one plate on the other, you would feel a difference in one arm and you would feel a difference in the other arm. So in this instance, she's not working one leg heavier than the other. She's still basically performing or accomplishing the same thing as a regular squat. It just looks stupid and is probably pretty dangerous to attempt. But as long as it is actually balanced and the weight is distributed evenly, it's having the same effect as a regular squat. Now, the final story that I have for you guys today is for those of you that have been following the channel for a while now, you guys might remember that this channel used to have a mascot and that mascot was my pet hedgehog named Hedge. Now there's still lots of videos backlogged on this channel if you guys want to go back and watch them that have tens of millions of views of just Hedge. Not even me in the video, just videos of Hedge that have millions and millions of views. And Hedge kind of became something of a legend on this channel. So today, March 15th, 2019, marks exactly one year since Hedge passed away. So last year in 2018, you know, right before I went to the Arnold Classic, Hedge got really, really sick. And he only made it about another week after I got home from the Arnold Classic last year. Um, and we're still not entirely sure what caused his death. We think it was something called WHS, which sounds kind of silly. The condition is called Wobbly Hedgehog Syndrome, which is a chronic degenerative disease that basically can't be cured and can't be stopped. Um, and some people in the comment section were saying based on, you know, the way he looked the day that he died or the day before he died, they think that it might have been sepsis or some kind of infection that caused him to rapidly deteriorate because I found him uh, dead, 
in his cage in the morning. So I just wanted to make a quick note at the end of this video, kind of a in memoriam for Hedge. And over on my vlog channel, I'll be posting kind of a memorial video with some clips of Hedge on there. So if you guys want to go check out my vlog channel where I put vlogs and bonus content, there's going to be a link to that in the description box below as well. And I'm going to be posting a video of Hedge on there today. So thank you guys for watching the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Rest in peace, Hedge. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.